Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to the March 13th Land Use Planning and Zoning Committee. I call this meeting to order. All councillors are present, present and Council Rogers is in attendance via Zoom. This is a hybrid, uh, we, are, we have guests of honor and other councillors here as well. Um, this is a hybrid meeting where all participants will be in person or video or on audio conference. Members of the public have the opportunity to address the committee if they have signed up for public comment per the rules published on the agenda and on our website on Friday. We will call for the speakers when we get to the individual agenda item you signed up for. Here are the public comment ground rules for those of you wondering. Uh, comments are to be addressed to the committee members only. Each participant has two minutes to present and any disruptive conduct will result in the removal from the meeting. Our first agenda item is A, EC55. This is the mayor's appointment of Mr. Daniel Aragon to the Environmental Planning Commission. I move confirmation. Second. We have a second for EC55 by Councillor Grout. Councillors, any questions or comments? Any questions or comments by the admin? Okay. Chair, uh, no comments. We urge your support. Thank you. All right, so this EC55 has been moved and seconded. Uh, we will do a roll call vote. Councillor Baca. Yes. Councillor Shampai? Yes. Councillor Grout? Yes. Councillor Rogers? Yes. Councillor Bassan? Yes. That passes unanimously. Moving on to agenda item B, Councillor Baca. Yeah. 03 designation of the central bridge crossing site as a city landmark. Move due pass. Second. We have a motion and a second for 03. Councillors, there are some amendments, but let's let's go ahead and move those. Let's move the amendment first, and then we'll come back for overall discussion and questions after that. Councillor Grout. Let's see. Um, this is a committee committee amendment number one. Um, it looks like, well. Is this you or is no. this Councillor Baca and yeah. Councillor Pena? Councillor Baca. Yeah, move amendment number one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and for the record, amendment one is on page two, line 18. We're going to revise section one as follows, adding in as shown in exhibit A. Uh, then there's adding the exhibit A to the bill. And then on page two, line 27, deleting section three and renumbering accordingly. Um, do we have a second? second? Second from Councillor Champagne on Amendment 1 to 03. Councillor Baca, do you want to explain further or? Um, I don't have anything to say other than this is, this is part of our, um, <coughs> sorry, this is part of the, the 25 Central Avenue uh, celebration and we're, this is the crucial bridge across the Rio Grande that uh, we're designating. Okay. Councillor Champagne? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just to clarify, because you mentioned the word bridge, if I read it, read it correctly, and I want to be sure I read it properly, it's not necessarily making the bridge the the correct landmark. It's it's necessarily the or the the position, the spot, the location of it, not not, not the physical bridge itself. Correct. Okay. Yeah. yeah, the original bridge no longer exists. Although you can see the pylons when the river goes down. Okay. So, councilors, uh, it says in the explanation to this, this amendment itself is adding an exhibit A and striking the compilation clause for the official zoning map. And I'm looking at Ms. Morris just to make sure that she nods at me that I'm getting it right. Okay. Madam Chair, councilors, yes, that's correct. The amendment basically adds uh, an exhibit so that it's clear in the future uh, what we mean by landmarking the Central Avenue site. Um, the bridge crossing site, and then um, by adding the um, landmark to the city's um, uh, Aegis map, that is the compilation of this. And so it's, it's not necessary to have a compilation clause that says don't compile, because we are actually technically compiling through the mapping of the site. All right, councillors, any other questions or comments to Amendment 1? Yes, uh, Madam Chair, that's a great question. Thank you. Um, and why exactly are we doing this? So that I have a better first, understanding. First, Councilor Grout, first, is this on the amendment? 
No. Good question. Okay, so we're gonna let's vote on the amendment. Uh, I don't see any other comments or um, questions from Councilor Rogers or anyone else. So I want to vote on the amendment first, and then we'll get back to the bill and for further questions and explanation. Councilor Baca. Yes. Councilor Champagne. Yes. Councilor Grout. Yes. Councilor Rogers. Yes. Councilor Basson. Yes. That passes on a five zero. Thank you. So moving back to the bill as amended, Councillor Grout. Thank you, Madam Chair. So can, can you explain to me exactly why we're recommending this, why this is being recommended? Madam Chair, Councillor Grout, yes. This is um, a proposal to landmark the central bridge crossing of the Rio Grande River. Um, the reason that we are recommending this site, not the actual bridge, um, for a city landmark um, is that uh, this is a very interesting piece of Albuquerque's history um, that is a little over, overlooked. Um, so the site, the Central Avenue Bridge Crossing site, on Twister, um, is the location of um, the bridge crossing from, from Central Avenue from the 1930s. Uh, this was the last piece of infrastructure to go in to confirm for the federal representatives um, the Route 66 uh, route through Albuquerque. So okay. up until this point, Route 66 had gone north, south through Albuquerque and had an alignment on 4th Street. Yes. Once the bridge went in, the federal um, officials that were doing the, the routing of Route 66 um, were able to then say, let's actually do an east-west routing through Albuquerque and through New Mexico. Um, this saved about 107 miles of travel on Route 66. And um, in, I believe, 1937, they shifted the alignment to east-west. Um, Albuquerque is pretty rare in that it's the only place in the country where Route 66 goes both north-south and east-west. East -west. Um, that's actually that the intersection of fourth and central is that at one place. But the um, Central Avenue bridge crossing location was the key piece of infrastructure to make that change. So Thank that's you. That's why we're landmarking this site, but not the bridge itself. It. It, very good. Thank you for that explanation. It makes it more sense now. Yeah. Thank you. Councillors, any other questions or comments? Councillor Baca to close? Uh, no, just move. I move it back. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we'll go ahead and take a roll call vote on 03 as amended. Councillor Baca. Yes. Councillor Champagne? Yes. Councillor Grout? Yes. Councillor Rogers? Yes. Councillor Basson? Yes. That passes on a 5 0 vote. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item C is 06. We have Councillor Grout, Councillor Rogers, and Councillor Feeblecorn is here. If you'd like to add in anything as needed, just let me know. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. Um, 06 is amending the Complete Streets Ordinance of the Revised Ordinances of Albuquerque, Chapter 6, Article 5, Part 6, Section 5, Definitions of the Revised Ordinance of Albuquerque to in include a definition of arid adapted green, water storm, green stormwater infrastructure, amending Chapter 6, Article 5, Part 6, Section 6, General Policy to include green stormwater infrastructure in city medians and landscape buffers. I move a due pass. Second. There's a motion and a second from Councillor Baca on 06. Councillors, we do have a committee substitute. If we want to move to that first, then we'll do the same as we did with the amendment before. We'll come back to the bill as substituted if that passes and discuss and do questions at that point. Thank you. I move a committee sub 024-6. And uh, we need a vote. Is there a second? There is a second from Councillor Champagne on the committee substitute. Councillors, any questions or comments on the substitute? All right. If we take a, a roll call, please. Councillor Baca. Yes. Councillor Champagne? Yes. Councillor Grout? Yes. Councillor Rogers? Yes. Councillor Busson? Yes. That passes on 5 0. Councillors, we're back on to 06 as substituted. 
Councilors, any questions or comments to add to the discussion regarding this bill? I see Councilor Rogers shaking her head. Anything to add, Councilors? No? Nope. Close? I move to that. I move that your support. Okay. We have a motion for support. Just teasing. She's urging support. <laughs> it's not a new motion. Don't freak out. Nope. Okay. <laughs> we'll go ahead and vote on 06 as substituted. Okay. Councilor Baca? Yes. Councilor Champagne? Yes. Councilor Grout? Yes. Councilor Rogers? Yes. yes. Councilor Bassan? Yes. That passes on a 5 0 vote. All right, that passes on a 5 0 vote. We're moving on to agenda item D. Councilor Rogers, for your information as well, we have Councilor Sanchez and Feeblecorn in, in the waiting area and watching us and watching you very closely. So we're moving on to agenda item D, R16, Councilor Rogers, for Feeblecorn and Ch Sanchez by request. Thank you so much. This is R16, approving and authorizing the filing of an application for a federal land and water conservation fund, grant for acquisition, acquisition of the Northern Sand Dunes property for protection and management in the major public open space program. I move for a due pass. Second. We have a motion and a second from Councillor Grout for R16. Councillor Rogers, do you wanna go ahead and explain further or to open? No, I have no further comments unless there's questions. Any other questions or comments from the council? Councilor Champagne. Yes, just a few questions, and I don't know who to direct them to. Start oh. with me. Okay. Uh, reading it, I just kind of curious: who owns the land around it? Do we are we aware of who owns the land surrounding this? It's a parcel, I guess. Mr. Hertz. Uh, <coughs> uh, uh, committee Chair uh, Councilor Champagne. Uh, the, the property is owned by uh, Del Rio Land LLC, or the, uh, it's, uh, let's see, sorry, um, I think I have that right, um, let's see, uh, Del Rio Land LLC, yes. My question wasn't the actual land, I understand the Phoenix based company owns the land right now, but who owns the land around it? Um, Do we know? Let's see. Um, let's see. Um, I'm not, yeah. Uh, Councillor, I'm afraid I don't have. Let's see. Actually, let's see here. Um, I'm sorry. Uh Madam Chair, if I may, I, we, I do have an app that if I have an address, I can see who owns around it. But uh, it's, let's see, the sand dunes are at um, 1614 acres. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, the sand, um, they're located on the eastern edge of Rio Puerco Escarpment, the northern part of the dunes borders, um, let's see, the, near the, the city shooting range park. And then the southern section borders the old FAA radar site. Ms. Councilor Champagne? Okay, so we don't know who owns the surrounding areas of this section of land or parcel of land. It's not a section, but um, we're not really sure. Correct? Um, I'm not sure, sorry. We just kind of know the geographical area of what you're saying is it butts up to this or butts right. up to that. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Director Simon might know. I'm not sure if he's. Here. He is here. Director, welcome. Good evening. Uh, Madam Chair, Councillor, uh, as I understand your question, it's not so much about who owns the property that's on our acquisition list, but who owns surrounding properties. That is, is that correct? Okay. Yes. So, to my knowledge, sir, uh, surrounding properties are owned by the City of Albuquerque. Some of the uh, entities that <clears throat> Mr. Hertz mentioned. Uh, and then the, the company, uh, the other one that's associated with Del Rio is the Garrett Development Corporation. Then to the, to the west would be, eventually you would get to the Pueblo of Laguna. Through but, that ravine and stuff, okay. Yeah, if you drop down off the escarpment, you would get to Laguna land, but the Del Rio and Garrett 
a group owns almost all of the land around the properties that we are interested in. Okay. Um, Madam Chair, it, it's mentioned in there that in 2015, it was assessed at 300 times the value, uh, but you stood, it says that in there in the pro, you're in the process of reevaluating the, the current value. How is that? Where are we on that process, mm -hmm. and how are we going about that? Right, Matt, Madam Chair and uh, Counselor, uh, previous appraisals have been done on the property. Uh, those were, as you know, probably know, appraisals are sort of a combination of art and science. Uh, the outcomes of appraisals depend on the assumptions going in. I think some of the prior appraisals of the property, uh, they did that under the assumption that it was um, commercial residential development was the highest and best use of the property. Uh, the sand dunes are sand dunes. So we have uh, done an updated appraisal based on some different assumptions. So. And there will always be a range of values um, and opinions of the value of property between owners and potential sellers. So um, when you're successful, you find the sweet spot. Understandable. I was just curious because yeah. it being sand, it was very hard to construct anything on it. And based yeah. on what, it's, yeah. what I read, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, the future idea of what this is is a open space park Kind of that that is correct, area. sir. And, and actually, the owners uh, that is in their plan as well. They they fully envision selling to the city as part of their overall long term plan. Is is there a reason? Is it is the grant timing on this? And please allow me, Madam Chair. Is the grant timing on this the reason why we're going forth without getting the appraisal done first and knowing how much it's mm -hmm. going to cost and. Uh, Madam Chair, Councilor Champagne, we have actually completed a, a recent appraisal, so we okay. and we have that finished. But uh, the grant timing uh, is, of course, we're we're going off of the state's requirements to to submit the applications on their schedule. Can you share what it appraised at? Uh, Off, offline or something? Be happy to discuss that. With okay, you. absolutely. I appreciate that. <clears throat> That's all my questions, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilors. Any other additional comments or questions? I had a question, Director, but I think it's going to actually fix itself with some upcoming legislation regarding grants and, and our process. So thank you for the okay. update. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion and a due pass for R16. Councilor Rogers, do you want to close? Well, thank you so much for the thoughtful questions, and I urge your support. All right. Ms. Enriquez. Councilor Baca. Yes. Councillor Champagne? No. Councillor Grout? Yes. Councillor Rogers? Yes. Councillor Busan? Yes. That passes on any four one vote. All right. Item D passes on an eight or four, four to one. Still in council, I guess. All right, moving on to agenda item E, R18, Councillor Baca, by request. R18, approving City of Albuquerque alignment of the Rio Grande Trail. Uh, move to be passed. Have it. Um, you up for a second? Or? I'll be a second. Okay, Councilor Grout with a second for R18. We have a motion and a second, Councilors, or Councilor Baca, if you want to open. Uh, this is just, uh, this is a long, long project that's been ongoing to uh, create a trail through the center of Albuquerque, through the center of the entire state. And so this is designating the Albuquerque portion. That's part of that. Sounds good. I know that we do have one speaker. Um, I, let's hear from that speaker, and then I do want to just have a little bit of an extra recap because I think it's beneficial uh, to, for the public to hear some of that as well. Thank you, Madam Chair. Our speaker today is Carl Colonius. Please go ahead. Afternoon, folks. Thank you very much for your time. My name is Carl Colonius, and I'm the Outdoor Recreation Planner with the New Mexico Outdoor Recreation Division, a subset of the Economic Development Department. One of the projects that I manage is the implementation of the Rio Grande Trail. Um, so this was a state initiative prioritized by the state legislature in 2015 with the establishment of the Rio Grande Trail Commission 
Um, at that point in time, a conceptual master plan was commissioned. That was completed in 2018. Currently, the New Mexico Outdoor Recreation Division is moving the project forward by contracting with a landscape architecture firm, Planned Collaborative, to refine the alignment, work with communities and user groups in order to refine the, the specific location of the trail as it moves um, from uh, um, El Paso up to the Colorado border. Um, one of the steps in that process is when identifying segments of the trail that are on the ground already. Um, we ask for communities to designate those or um, identify the segments as an official part of the Rio Grande Trail. Um, this uh, designation um, is administrative. Um, we will then take those designations to the Rio Grande Trail Commission for final approval um, and adding to the official route um, of the 580 plus mile full trail of which we have approximately 100 miles designated at this point with another 130 to 140 in the queue ready to be approved by the Rio Grande Trail Commission. Um, this approval um, will not increase the city's liability. Um, it also does not come with any funding. Um, so uh, the trail ultimately will not change other than having an additional signage component um, added. Thank you, Mr. Colonius. I think that you actually described what I wanted to make sure to clarify for the public as well, that this is not necessarily that the city is doing anything necessarily new. It's that the city is aligning a trail and formally accepting it uh, as part of this larger project throughout the nation. Am I correct? Throughout the state. OK. Any other questions, counselors, comments, administration? OK. Uh, Councilor Baca to close. Uh, is there anyone support? All right. Ms. Enriquez. Councilor Baca. Yes. Councilor Champagne. Yes. Councilor Grout. Yes. Councilor Rogers. Yes. Councilor Basson. Yes. That passes on a 5 0 vote. Moving on to item F, R22, Councillor Baca by request. Uh, R22, establishing a two year policy for the priority site plan approval and construction permitting of development projects that will result in permanent housing and centers and corridors and development projects within the downtown center. I move do pass. Second. There's a motion and a second from Councillor Grout on R22. I do know that we have one person signed up to speak, and I know that they're running late. If unless they're on Zoom now. But if for some reason they do show up before we're done with this, then we'll go ahead and allow them to speak. Um, there is an amendment, so I want to move to that first, just like the others, and then we will come back to the bill as amended or not. Councillor Grout. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to offer committee amendment number one to R24-22. Um, basically, um, there is a need, a great need for housing and redevelopment across the country, across the city. And so I would like to change this up a little bit so that it um, change the title so that it's within the last line, um, the development projects within metropolitan redevelopment areas. On page one after line eight, um, insert a long line there. Um, and then on page two in section one, change up wording a little bit. And the explanation is um, the purpose of this amendment is to expedite development projects within metropolitan redevelopment areas by removing the language of the downtown center and including MRAs in the, in the included boundaries that qualify these projects for an expedited process. By doing this, it will expedite projects in the areas of historic disinvestment and as defined by the 2017 Albuquerque Bernalillo Comprehensive Plan. Do we have a motion for Amendment 1 on R22 is our second? Second. Second from Councillor Baca. Any questions or comments, Councillors? Anything from the administration? Councillor Champagne? Not necessarily a question, more of explanation on this. So 
And the reason why I ask is based on the map that they provided, this changes it from those specific areas to? Wherever the MRAs are in the city. Okay. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I'm started. Okay. Director Varela, do you have anything you want to say or ask or add? Yes, uh, thank you. Chair uh, Hassan and council members, ultimately it'll be a policy call. We can't prioritize, prioritize everything because then nothing goes first, literally. Um, what we did when the uh, city looked at the housing crisis and the dire need to do everything we could to speed up approvals of permits and of developments related to housing, we tried to go through and pick areas that we felt um, we could handle, that we would have the capacity to prioritize. Uh, otherwise, we would have picked more areas. And so I do think that the administration uh, may have some concern with swapping out MR areas for downtown areas. However, I do think that much of the downtown would fall in it, into MR areas anyway. So, uh, but ultimately it's gonna be up to city council. We just don't want this sliding to where we suddenly say, you know, treat everything as number one in line because then that simply isn't gonna be workable for the, for the planning department. Thank you. Oh, director, that was one of my concerns as well and you phrased it best. I think that we need housing, we need a whole bunch of things. Uh, so it is a slippery slope but I think that it ha seems like it's been narrowed down very intentionally. And if, as long as it doesn't go beyond that, sounds like maybe it will be workable. Um, be a small nod from the director, but we'll, we'll see as we go forward. So, counselors, any other questions or comments? All right, Councilor Grout, on your amendment. Thank you. I would urge your support. Thank Ms. You. Enriquez? Councilor Baca? Yes. Councilor Champagne? Yes. Councilor Grout? Yes. Councilor Rogers? Yes. Councilor Bassan? Yes. That passes on a 5 0 vote. Moving back to R22 as amended. Councilors, uh, Councilor Baca, do you want to add anything first? Or, Councilors, do you have any questions, comments? Madam, Madam Chair, I, I, you know, I, I'm very much for, while I am biased toward District 2, um, I do recognize the need for housing across across the city. Um, I, I do recognize uh, Director Varela's concern about, uh, you know, if, if everybody's first, then everybody's first and nobody's first. So, um, but I do let, MR does have some special rules they can they can work with and hopefully this will spark something. I, I really like the tracking portion of this because I, I do wonder just how much this will spur mm -hmm. uh, development or not. So, yeah, I do urge support. All right. I know that was kind of a close. Anything to add from the administration or any other counselors? All right, so we will vote on R22 as amended. Councilor Baca? Yes. Councilor Champagne? Yes. Councilor Grell? Yes. Councilor Rogers? Yes. Councilor Bassan? Yes. That passes on a 5 0 vote. All right, there being no further business, this LEPS committee meeting is adjourned. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you, everybody.